Ooh, ah, oh, yeah, let's do this. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at something special and new from Red Horse Knife Works. Now, I really thought that Ed had perfected the Hellraiser in the production series, the P-Series, when he introduced the very first one, which I still have right here. It's one of my favorite uh, lightweight, full-size knives that I carry in my rotation. But what could make this knife just a wee bit better? Well, how about if you made it in a button-actuated side-opening automatic? And that's exactly what Ed did. These knives are identical in every way except for the opening mechanism and the finishes that I have here. So my original is all carbon fiber with the satin steel blade, and this version is all carbon fiber with the black DLC blade. But really, I got to tell you, you know, there are a lot of automatics out there on the market, some better than others. When you're in this price range, you generally aren't expecting anything of a super solid build quality. You're not expecting a nice solid thwack when you open it up. And you'll hear that better when we're going down for the uh, tabletop when the, uh, the knife is closer to the microphone. But I got to tell you, this might be one of the best values overall inside opening automatics. I mean, you know, we go back to some of the classics like the LUDT. That's really a favorite among a lot of people. The Protec Godson is another. This puts you at a significantly lower price. It's a larger blade, and it opens every bit as well. Now, I'd love for it to be just a wee little bit stronger, and it's not. Uh, but I got to tell you, it opens with authority. You've got a great thwack sound when it opens up. It doesn't feel weak at all. I, I'm just, I guess I'm spoiled, you know. But when you're buying five, six, seven thousand, or it's five, six, seven hundred dollar, thousand dollar, fifteen hundred dollar automatics, there's going to be a little bit of a difference than you've got in this much more budget oriented uh, kind of category. Now, a lot of companies that come somewhat close to as low as these are priced. They just don't open with the same degree of authority. This thing is just fantastic. It fires every time and it locks up solid. It feels really, really good. And I got to tell you, uh, to have a virtual twin to the thumb stud opener, which I also love, obviously, I've still got it, there's something nice about having that choice. Now, if you happen to live in a state, one of those terrible communist states where you cannot have automatic knives, this is not going to be the choice for you. Then you go back to the standard Hellraiser, and I'll link the review to that one down below in the description so that everybody gets a chance to, uh, to enjoy this. But the automatic, for those of us that are living in states that allow us to have automatics, please do check your, your knife laws. Um, this is a really, really fantastic choice. It's still wonderfully lightweight. It's only a little bit heavier than the original. I'm not really certain why. Um, I mean, really, you've only got the addition of a spring. The, the lock bars are the same thickness. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not the lock bar, but the stop pins are the same thickness. Everything seems to be just about the same. And really, you're only opening, uh, excuse me, you're only adding the opening mechanism, which I can't imagine adds a lot of weight, but there is a little bit of a weight difference. And yes, by the way, you can close this one-handed. Probably not the smartest thing to do because if you miscalculate something and that blade comes down on your finger, it is going to cut you. These are stupidly, stupidly sharp. Now, I've been friends with Ed for a long time, so I'm not, I'm not going to say this is a completely unbiased review, but here's the thing. If I didn't think it was worthy, just like every other knife that, that I have dealt with over the years, if the knife is not worthy, then I'm never going to make a video on it because I don't want to trash somebody else's work. I mean, I've done that in the past. Uh, it came back to bite me in the ass. And it hurt the makers that uh, had these overly bad negative reviews. So uh, what I do now is I try to only show you the knives 
that I believe are worthy. Are there going to be pros and cons in every single video? Absolutely. But if it's such a horrible piece of trash that I really don't think you should bother messing with it, um, I'm certainly not going to put it out there. So yes, I do have a bias because uh, Ed Kim is a friend of mine. However, he also knows if it wasn't all that great, I wouldn't be putting it out here. If it wasn't all that great, I wouldn't have hung on to my original. And uh, I still got it. I still love it. I think it's a fantastic knife. One of the least expensive knives that display this level of craftsmanship. And I believe they have done the same thing here with the automatic. So without any further ado, we're going to head right downstairs. We're going to take a look at this thing up close and see what we think of it. Okay, now we're going to get a chance to do the close-up and see these two side by side, and you'll get a chance to see that they're virtually identical in every way. The only visual cues that you're going to see at a quick glance to tell one from the other is uh, a very obviously the firing button or the button lock, and this has the thumb stud on the blade. This one, the original P-Series, has the quote-unquote speed holes in the blade, and this is a plain, clean blade without any holes in it whatsoever. Uh, but otherwise, they're going to be virtually identical. They're also available in the same finishes. So you can get this in the carbon fiber with the satin blade, or like I have here in the black DLC. Now, I'm gonna not going to get too lost in the, uh, the minutia of all of the specs, mainly because I've already got a video of this one up, and I am going to go ahead and put that in the description below. You're welcome to check that out. Um, again, especially if you're not really an automatic fan, but you love the look of this knife, you can buy it in a re regular manual thumb stud opener. But basically, the Hellraiser P-Series Automatic is available for $295. They show a listing of it being $355, then reduced to $295. So that may be for the pre-order price because they're just dropping the pre-order right now. So if, you, if you're viewing this video later on, you see the price is $355. I wasn't lying to you. Um, it was the introductory price. I don't know if it's going to go up in the future or not. But the basic specs are three and three quarter inch blade that's in S35 VN. They're showing a 59 to 60 Rockwell hardness on there. This particular version is PVD coated black. You've got the... Uh, stainless steel liners inside which have been drilled out you see the massive holes in there uh, to reduce the weight uh, let's see you've got a five inch long handle that is really nicely contoured very comfortable in the hand just like the original and uh, your hardware is going to be all titanium with a titanium pocket clip the screws back here are going to be stainless steel as is going to be the button of course and they're using a single ceramic bearing. Uh, what they're saying is to create a super slick and powerful opening mechanism without the side-to-side -side play, which is typical of similar automatic knives. That is a statement from their website. Um, I don't know if it really makes a huge difference, but I do know uh, that there really is no play. It does feel really, really good and solid and locked in when it's open. So if that's how they achieved it, well, shit, <laughs> I guess it works. So there they are side by side to give you the direct comparisons. Uh, you've got that same great swooping design. It looks very much like a, an old straight razor. That's the point. That's why it's called the Hell Razor. 
I love the, the clean pivots on these. I like that they're not overly decorated, overly done. Um, I am going to give it a knock for one big change that they made, and I know why they made it. Uh, there are people out there that will just bitch incessantly. And, you know, when you're selling a mass-produced item, this is a production knife, you do have to cater to them. Uh, but I do not like the fact that it's got a damn reversible clip on it. I like the nice clean look without the uh, the opening there and the screw holes and everything. I'm hoping they make a block off plate for it at some point. That'd be nice if it was just, you know, a carbon fiber block off plate or even if it was stainless steel and it had like the Red Horse Knives uh, logo on it. I think that would look a little bit cleaner and a little bit better. Ed, if you're listening, that would be a really great option. You know, I'd pay an extra 10, 15 bucks to have that filler tab in there. Might be worth considering. Uh, because if you look at the original, it is so nice and clean. All you've got is your pivot and the two pieces of hardware. Otherwise, it is all just beautiful uh, contoured and beveled carbon fiber. Whereas this one, you've got the interruption of that flow right there. And that just, it just irks the hell out of me. But, I mean, I'm picky. It's a nitpicky thing. A lot of people probably won't even care uh, because a lot of the people that are going to be buying this are buying production knives. And, man, look at how many Benchmades are out there that have uh, this open plate on this side for the reversible pocket clip. So, you know, it may just be me. I, I don't see a lot of lefties carrying this that would necessitate the clip on that side because the fucking button's not there. I mean, yeah, you can... You could do it with your finger, which is probably why they placed it where they did. It's actually, you know, it's not really uncomfortable to do it like that. So maybe uh, maybe lefties will like it. I don't know. But uh, that's really my only gripe about this knife. One of the things that I've always enjoyed about this knife and why I carry mine as often as I do is the fact that it is a full size three and three quarter inch cutting edge. Uh, so it's really basically a four inch blade uh, with that huge notch out of it. And it's so lightweight. It is so easy to carry. They're also pretty damn slim. It's only a half an inch um, from the surface of one scale to the surface of the other. So it's pretty slim there. 140 uh, thousandths thick on the uh, blade thickness. So it's not an overbearing knife to carry at all. So a lot of people are going to find this to be a wonderful EDC knife. Now, obviously, it lacks a tip so you can't like do any jabbing or stabbing or poking uh, this is rather pokey uh, if you want pokey things that is rather pokey but it's not going to be the same as having you know a spear point or a dagger or a drop point or something like that uh, but it is going to be useful for a lot of stuff you know the the rock cutting the the slicing pulling through is going to be super easy. It really is a wonderfully shaped blade. So I think a lot of people are going to find some utility out of it. And that's something that we don't often consider uh, when we get down to automatic knives, especially, so, not even especially, but any automatic knife, side opening or out the front. We don't look at them really to be a utilitarian style knife. It could be a good EDC knife for like cutting tasks. It could be a good um, second or third option for self-defense or fourth or fifth option, depending on uh, what, what you have at your disposal. But it's not generally looked upon as a utilitarian uh, type of knife. But uh, I think you're going to find plenty of uses for that blade. I like the clean look. I like the clean design. As I mentioned, I love the lightweightness of it. They did uh, take care to uh, cut the pockets out of the stainless steel liners. So you've got the strength and the reinforcement of stainless steel, uh, but you don't have the weight that you would normally associate with that because of those holes. Yeah, I w as I mentioned in the, I, I believe I mentioned in the previous video, I'd love to see a fancier clip on there. But honestly, folks, you're spending $2.95. You're getting S35VN, you're getting the black PVD, you're getting a ton of very, very well-finished carbon fiber. So, I mean, to get a more basic clip is probably to be expected. It's probably not the worst thing in the world. Give you guys a close-up of the Red Horse Knives logo there. If my camera will focus. Come on, focus. Come on, good boy. Come on. Maybe my hand's just moving too much. I am getting that shaky knife maker hand syndrome. 
but I think it's just a fantastic knife all the way around. Uh, I gave a glowing review on the original P-Series automatic because it really is that good. Uh, it is one that if you, you know, if you watch my Instagram enough, you, you'll notice that I do carry this quite often. And I generally stay between three and a half and three and three quarter inch for my blades. Typically more carried are the three and a half inch blades just because it's a little bit easier, especially in the summertime here in Texas. It's, it's hot. You're wearing lighter weight clothing whenever you can. You don't want a bigger, bulkier, heavier knife unless you, you know, absolutely need it for that day. Uh, but when I want to carry something larger, this is one of the ones I reach for because it is so lightweight and it is slim and it's also narrow in this dimension. So it takes up a lot less room in the pocket uh, than, than many other knives that I have in this blade length. You'll notice the blade goes all the way to the very, very edge of the handle. So they are maximizing the blade length and handle ratio to give you a super compact knife that once deployed is really nice and large. Very, very comfortable in the hands, very, very easy to manipulate. And it doesn't matter um, what handhold you decide to go with, um, it's going to be comfortable. So whatever you're going to be doing with the knife, I personally feel it doesn't have very many limitations. It's a great size, it fits right in the hand, very, very ergonomic, and it's a useful blade shape. So. I mean, what the hell? You really can't go wrong. Uh, and again, I'll say it. I mean, for the price, for $295, I think that you're getting a solid deal. Now, if you're only used to buying very, very inexpensive production knives, you might look at this and go, man, $295 for a production knife? That's kind of high. I want you to start doing some research. And you can go back through a lot of the videos. I have hundreds of videos on my channel. And you'll see where custom knife makers make mid-tech knives and then also will branch out into production knives. And generally, and not everybody, but generally you're going to see their production knives in the $350 to $600 price range and higher, of course, if you get into more exotic materials like Timascus and, and things like that. So when I say that it's a relatively inexpensive price, I'm comparing it to what exactly Red Horse Knives is. Uh, a production version of their more expensive knives. I've owned the Midtech Hellraiser and I've owned a full custom Hellraiser. The Midtech, forgive me because this is going back seven or eight years. I believe the Midtech was right around four or 450, if I'm not mistaken, just in plain titanium and steel. Um, and then my custom, which was zirconium and beautiful carbon fiber and, and just, it was absolutely the sexiest knife. Um, you know, that was closer to $1,500. So to see a replication of that from the same manufacturer at $295, that's where I call it a value. If you want to put this up against a typical Benchmade or Spyderco, no, it's going to be more expensive. Uh, but you are getting a high degree of quality in the components. Everything is fitted perfectly. And uh, Ed and his partner are also inspecting every knife as they come through. If there's some wiggle in there, that shit gets tossed to the side. If there's a wonky grind on there or the edge isn't right, anything is uh, amiss in the finishing of the carbon fiber, poof, it, you never see it. It goes off to the side. Uh, it's either then uh, the, the part is replaced or it's it's fixed in some way or the, the knife is uh, trashed and fully replaced by the manufacturer. So you're getting that extra step of quality assurance that, you know, it's unlikely that anything's ever going to slip through and come to you with an issue. So uh, one more time, I'll give you some close-ups here on the way out the door and we will uh, move on to the next video. Oh man, look at that. I really do think that is a sexy ass knife. The carbon fiber grabs the light in such a way. Uh, it's very subtle indoors. You go outside in the sunlight, which I attempted to recreate in my photography to give you some uh, shots of the weave of the carbon fiber. Man, it just pops out and looks fan friggin tastic. All the way around, it's well made, it's classy, it's affordable, I believe, for what you're getting. And yeah, man, you don't want to go anywhere near that edge. 
It is razor sharp. It really does live up to its name. They did a fantastic job. So whichever way you want to go, the uh, the manuals are still available. You can still go to um, redhorseknifeworks.com and order either the P-Series Hellraiser or the P-Series Hellraiser Automatic. And you could do the Set and Blade, Black PVD, whichever, you know, whatever tickles your butthole, whatever you like the most, they've got an option for you and they're affordable. So, hey, that's a that's a great combination. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, please do so by going to Patreon. If you don't want to be a Patreon member, that's totally cool, man. No worries. I would love if you would just give a little extra support by clicking like on the video. That tells YouTube, hey, people are liking this. Let's show it to more people. And uh, leave a comment down below, no matter what it is. I don't Tell me your grandmother's name or uh, how big a fist you can... No, okay, let's, let's not get crazy. But leave a comment, leave a like. I hate saying that because it's such a typical YouTuber thing to say. But my videos are being pushed down and stifled and not being seen. I've got videos with well over a million views. Uh, excuse me. Many in the hundreds of thousands. And now for the past two years, I barely break 20,000. And that's because of YouTube's dumbass algorithms. So do whatever you can to help me out. If you do become a patron, you can do it for as little as $5 a month. You get entered into a monthly or bi-monthly drawing for mid-tech, high-end high production, and even custom knives and other EDC gear that you'll get for free. So it's my way of paying back to you and thanking you guys for the support. And until next time, I'll see you guys on the next video.